Etheric Workings In order to more easily understand what follows, I ask that you turn back to Lesson 18 and refer to the columns in Figure 63. Right up until the last day of the Enochian period, D. Kelly believed that the 30 Iris were simply the numbered segments of creation that organized in groups of 3 and 116 the 91 parts of the Earth. Furthermore, they believed that the 91 divinely appointed names of the parts of the Earth were merely the angelic language names for the geographic areas of the Earth named in Column Roman 3. Elister Crowley gave perhaps the most comprehensible way of viewing the relationship of the 30 ethers and the Tree of Life. It is to be remarked that the last three ethers have ten angels attributed to them, and they therefore represent the ten Sephiroth. Yet these ten form but one, a Malkoth pendant to the next three, and so on, each set being, as it were, absorbed in the higher. The last set consists, therefore, of the first three ethers with the remaining 27 as their Malkuth, 117 the angels Crowley is referring to are the governors of the ethers. Because text contains four governors instead of three, Crowley considered the last three ethers as a set containing ten governors who could be projected on a tree of life. As the magician moves upwards through the ethers, he or she progressively breaks into higher and higher levels of consciousness. If we are prepared for this new territory, our visions are characterized by a certain spontaneity and lucidity. However, when we begin to get out of our depth when we haven't yet achieved the level of consciousness necessary to take the next step our visions become murky and forced, as if we were watching it through a glass darkly. When this happens, the vision is usually characterized by a clear message announcing in no uncertain terms that we have not completely penetrated the ether. As the vision begins, three angels appear in the mirror, crystal, or your mind's eye, and march in a circle around you so that you cannot move in any direction. They will not respond to your questions or vouchsafe a proper vision. When something like this happens, you know that your present level of consciousness is not refined enough to penetrate, let alone appreciate, the next ether. It's as though you are a radio receiver not yet equipped to pull in higher broadcast frequencies. You won't need to look far to discover what this obstacle is. It should be right there in your magical diary in the record of the last ether you could successfully penetrate. Somewhere in that vision there is a message telling you what it is you must do in order to take the next step in your spiritual journey through the heavens. The vision is usually characterized by the appearance of one or more of the governors, who stand ready to answer my inquiries and demonstrate the nature of the ether. Epilogue in the middle of the night isn't it enough to see that a garden is beautiful without having to believe that there are fairies at the bottom of it too? For the last few days, I have arranged to sleep through the afternoon heat of an unseasonably hot late summer so that I may create and disturbed in the cool peace and quiet of the wee hours. This course of magic has taken me much longer to complete than I anticipated. Did I say complete? It's a well-worn cliché that a writer never finishes a work, but merely abandons it. This is far from the end of the material, however. I've worked hard and long on the appendices, which for the practicing Enochian magician will likely become the most worn and dog-eared section of the course. I must confess that my attitudes concerning Enochian magic have changed many times in the 30 years it has been part of my life. My respect for the magical art form, however, 
has never diminished and has continued to grow unabated. I feel like the musician who is moved to tears by listening to a great symphony, but who can play only a few tunes himself and those only moderately well. Perhaps you will never choose to make Enochian magic a part of your spiritual repertoire. Perhaps you will. In either case, as I abandon this book, it is my sincerest hope that I have been able to help you in some small measure attune your magical ear to the music of the spheres.